So today we're going to make an eight and a half by 11 inch mailer uh, with bubble wrap. So a bubble mailer, depending on the size of your bubble wrap is going to depend how you cut it for your mailer. So this one's 16 inches in width. So obviously um, eight and a half by eight and a half is 17. So at 16 inches, we're going to be short. So we're going to have to choose this way height from here to here to be 11 inches and then we'll need to cut um, this at the 17 inches so you just want to line your ruler up and cut it if you don't have a cutting mat that's okay just measure each side up and cut it across but being I so I have a cutting well actually being I have a duct tape had a duct tape business I have a cutting mat I only recently started sewing making masks but anyway so we have the um, 17 inch there and then we have to cut this way to the 11 inches. If you're gonna make a bunch of a certain size mailer there are certain sizes of different sizes of double uh, bubble wrap um, bubble wraps out there so like for example I had a 12 inch one the other day and so anything you get is gonna matter on how you uh, decide which way you want to cut it's all about the waste if you don't care about the waste it's no biggie so you have the bubbly side to the wrap and the smooth side. You want the smooth side up um, because obviously it's gonna your tape's gonna adhere to it, and then you got the cushiony part inside. So what I do um, when I'm making my mailers is you want to think about which part is the top part as to how you want your uh, tape angled. So because it's going to get folded this way, um, I want my mailer tape to go this way. Um, if you watch my other video where I do the 6x9 mailer, you'll see the tape goes, um, I'm doing the tape this way, still in the same angle, but it's because of how I cut the piece and how it fits on my board. So I lined it up with my lines and then keep in mind now this is our top and this is our bottom. So we're going to go with two inches over on these edges and one inch over, he over here. So we're going to have some fun today with our duct tape. And we're going to make a macaroni, cheese and bacon one just for fun because I have that many duct tapes. I pull my duct tape tight when I do it and then kind of pull it more and slant it at this end so you get where you're lined up and then go down. And then smooth that. And we're going to cut that at the two inches. And then each row just needs to overlap a little bit. So again, I slant it at this way and then I come down and I smooth it out. Anybody eat macaroni and cheese and bacon? I can't say I do, but I thought, hey, they're both food. So same idea, Just keep going across all the way down, smooth it out, cut. So the other idea is this, is you can take your pretty tapes too, I have different color zebra tapes, green, purple, white, so they'd be fun to do. Or if you have a business and you're trying to do it for economic reasons, your gray tape's the most economical. Kind of fun for customers to get some unique mailers happening. Wait 
just keep going on down. I'm starting to get hungry. Mmm, craving bacon. side because my arms are not that long. I feel like I'm making a casserole to take to a party. And then remember this piece is a inch over if you work it and it's not overlapping, you don't um, need the whole inch because one side is just folding in. So just always make sure that you get it overlapped. And that amounts no big deal for this edge. If it was uh, your closing edge that you were keeping to seal once your whatever your mailing is in, then I'd be worried. But otherwise, all right. Nummy, nummy in my tummy okay so now what i'm gonna do um is we're gonna cut the edge pieces so i'm just gonna make this end part just for folding over so all we need is an inch And then because this is going to be the top half we're folding over, you could leave it even at the two inches, just even it out nicely. Um, or do the one and a half inch. If you're going to put something big and bulky and it's not going to lay super flat, I definitely do it a little longer. Um, you always want to pull from the edge that you started because it'll come up one piece. All right, so now we're going to do our cuts, corner cuts. So we know the corner's right here. So I do a little bit of a slant over. And it just helps it to fold so you don't have any sticking out on the ends. If you find it easier, you could go ahead and um, flip your piece over and cut. So there's your corner. And then because we're folding it in half, we want to get our center point. So um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight and a half. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I always like to double check. So you're going to do at that eight and a half mark, which is going to be your width. You're going to do a cut just from the bubble wrap over. And then you're going to do the same on the other side. And you're just going to lift your piece up and lift it from this end because of the way the tape is laying. The other end, it'll start pulling it apart. Okay. So it doesn't really matter which side you pick um, to be your fold over side. I think I kind of butchered that other side there. So, um, but since this is our shorter end here on this part, let's go ahead and fold that one in first. So you just want to fold it over to the edge of your mailer. And that means you'll use these sides as your cut in two. So I'm just going to V this out a little bit. Just like the way it folds over better so then you're gonna fold in 
your sides on your, so this side's gonna fold over there. So we're folding it in. And then what happens is this is gonna get folded over right to the edge there. Just make sure you're staying straight. And then press your side down. So then we're gonna go ahead and fold the bottom end in first. And then we're gonna do our side piece. And then I have my parchment paper. You could normally just tear off one piece and put it in there, but since I didn't measure it ahead. And there you have your fold over. The putting the parchment paper on the sticky stuff helps for you to get stuff inside. So now you have yourself a macaroni and cheese and bacon bubble mailer that you can send out in the mail. You have a couple options. You could print something out on paper and just tape it with clear tape over top. You could get white duct tape or any solid color and tape it on there and write on it. Sharpie works good. Um, and same idea with your return label and you can put your stamps on there. So kind of fun thing to play around with. You can do anything you want. Um, but yeah, so hope you enjoyed this. Thanks for watching.